My name is Debbie Ward. Um, I am the Associate Dean for Academics at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, which is the nursing school at UC Davis, founded only five years ago. Currently, uh, we have four programs in uh, nursing and healthcare at our school, a master's degree in leadership for people who are already nurses, a PhD for people who are both nurses and people who are not nurses, who are studying the science of changing a broken healthcare system. We have a master's degree program for physician assistants and a master's degree program for nurse practitioners. Within the next two years, we'll be starting a master's entry program in nursing for college graduates who are not nurses who want to begin their nursing career. Today, I'm talking with you about beyond the hospital. So how many of you intend to become nurses? Ooh, that's a lot. Obviously, you're not here. If you were going to be a veterinarian, you wouldn't be in this room. Uh, who's here who's already a nurse? That would be me. And you, are you already a nurse? Shh. Yeah, all right. So the two of us are already nurses, all the rest of you are not. So when we think about being a nurse, most of us assume that that means that we're going to work in hospitals. So a lot of nurses do work in hospitals, 60% right now. And what kinds of things do they do there? Primary care, that's a good start. What else? Med surge, so what does that mean? Uh-huh, they work on a medical surgical floor taking care of people who've maybe had some surgery, have a serious medical issue. And what do they do in that place when they are taking care of people when we say on the floor? That's a crazy term. It sounds like they're lying on the ground. But when we say that people are on the floor, nurses are on the floor, what are they doing? Say what? Assessment. Assessment, great. They're looking at people and thinking, is this man in better shape or worse shape than when I saw him two hours ago after he had his uh, heart attack? So they're assessing people. What else are they doing? They're passing medications. And they have complete responsibility for those medications. So although they may be receiving the orders from a physician or a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant, to administer a certain medication, the nurse has to know exactly what that medication is, what it does, how to administer it, and must be able to assess whether the decision to give that person the medication was a good one or a bad one. And if it's a bad one, he or she doesn't give it. So medication responsibility, what else do they do? Oh, yeah, good one. <laughs> That's a great one. Yeah, they record what they've done so that others will know. What else do they do? Labs, they monitor labs, they uh, organize labs. What else do they do? They educate, oh, thank you. That was very, that was good too. So they educate people about their conditions. They educate family members. What else do they do? They what? Advocate. Yeah, they advocate for their patients. They may, something may be not happening. For example, maybe somebody's dying and the family says, is, is, uh, is he dying? And, uh, and the nurse wants to be in a position to say, let's be able to talk about that and decide what you want to have happen for this patient. These are great, yeah. Yeah, they coordinate with the care team. Fantastic. So when uh, you're in the hospital and you have uh, Lyme disease, and you are exhausted, but people are coming in and they're get, taking your blood and they're wanting to do this test and they're wanting to do that test, the nurse would be the person to maybe put a sign on the door that says, we're calling a three hour quiet time for this patient. Nobody goes in to draw, to draw bloods or do anything. That's how we're organizing our care. Let me talk to the physical therapist, reschedule the time that you're gonna come. So the nurse coordinates the care. That's fantastic, does all of those things. So. The reason that people come to hospitals is for nursing care. 
You may have had a heart attack and things need to happen about that, but the reason you're in that place and not at home or somewhere else is so you will have 24-hour expert care by a nurse. That's what hospitals are for. So we tend to think that that's the only place that they work, but they've always worked in places other than hospitals. And in the future, even more than now, they're going to be working in a million places outside of hospitals. And that's what I want to talk with you about today and then leave enough time to be sure that people can ask questions. So in the past, most nurses worked in homes, right? In the day, this is dating me and my antiqueness, but uh, both of my parents were not born in hospitals because hospitals were places where poor people went. And in my parents' case, middle class families, they were very anxious not to go to the places where poor people were cared for. They were anxious to be at home, considered a cleaner place, that's still true, uh, and a better place to have a child. But it was frequent then to have the nurse come into the home. So most nurses, only 80 to 100 years ago, worked in private homes, and that's what they did. But they did work in other places like schools and orphanages and rest homes and sanitaria. What is san what's a sanitarium? Say what? Well, psychiatric care, that's good. You're thinking psychiatric care, but what, what was the big thing that people went into sanitariums for 60 years ago? Yes, tuberculosis. A to you. Who was that who said tuberculosis? All right, you remember. Uh, you know, however you got your knowledge is good. You still get an A. That's fantastic. That's right. And, of course, prisons. Uh, nurses have always worked in prisons and, and continue to work in the corrective system today. And they worked as public health nurses. So uh, what does a public health nurse do? Yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing. Goes out to the community and educates. In the early days of the HIV epidemic, for example, public health nurses were leading voices in caring for people uh, with HIV. Um, what else do public health nurses do? Say what? Screening. Screening. Yeah, that's right. Um, Yeah, the public health nurse could be, you know, set up shop uh, and take your blood pressure and, you know, screen people for diabetes. They do that kind of thing. A little less now than, in some, than before, but that's true. What else do they do, public health nurses? Yeah. Promote prevention. That's right. So out in the community, uh, for example, working with the water sanitarians to determine if, if uh, the water supply of Dayton, Ohio goes terribly wrong, which it recently did. The public health nurses are out there working, we call that secondary prevention, to help organize other ways for people to get their water and to ensure that people are not drinking contaminated water. Somebody had their hand up up here? That's right. So that's great. So perhaps working as an epidemiologist. What's happening today, right now, in the world where nurses are involved in this kind of screening and data? Ebola. Ebola. We can talk a little bit more about the role of nurses in Ebola, but that's a very dire worldwide situation in which nurses have many roles, public health nurses, and that would be one of them, tracking those data. So. Public health nurses, in the day, the public health nurse, when you had a new baby, oh, look, here's an apple on the floor. Uh, in the day, the public health nurse would come to your house when you had had a new baby and uh, would come in. That happened to me. Uh, when I had children in a remote rural area in the Northeast, the nurse showed up at my door. <laughs> I said, how did you know? She said, well, the hospital calls us, and it's part of our job to come to every home and say hi to the mom, see how the baby's doing, and see if we can answer any questions. What a fantastic opportunity. 
that was paid for by our, our local public health nursing um, agency in that town. So nurses did all kinds of things. But let's talk about the kinds of things they're going to end up doing in the future. So I bet everybody knows about being an advanced practice nurse, right? A nurse practitioner, a midwife, a clinical nurse specialist, a nurse attending. Has anybody ever been in the hospital with a nurse attending? So you may have had the experience of being in an academic medical center, for instance, and maybe you were cared for by, in addition to the nurses, you were cared for by the physicians who were residents, and they had an attending, a chief physician in their group who was, you say, we all have to invent new language for all these things. We say he's our neurosurgery attending. He's the chief, he or she is the chief physician in charge of attending. Many hospitals now have nurse attendings so that as your care is monitored by a nurse uh, and you present a special issue, a complicated problem, your newborn maybe is, uh, Let's see, my last contact with a nurse attending, your newborn uh, looks as though uh, she's not really swallowing effectively. They need to do a quick check to see whether her food tube is patent. The nurse attending came in, put a little tube down, found that the baby's uh, food tube was perfectly patent. She just was one of those little babies that was an erper. And so the nurse attending was the person who took care of that relatively complex problem. She needed to assess the problem, do uh, this uh, special procedure of passing the tube down the baby's uh, food tube, seeing that it was working, said, good, it's patent, it's open, it works, good, we'll go ahead now and just regard this baby as an erper. What do you think a nurse informaticist is? Good analyzes data. So back in the day when we, who our friend up here who said one of the important things that nurses do is chart, we charted them by hand. And there were big horrible piles of paper in every hospital and you might have gone into the emergency room and they might have said, oh, your, your chart's over in radiology because you were there on Friday. I'm sorry, we can't get to any of your information. Those were terrible days. What do we have that's replaced that? Yeah, and, and the electronic health record, right? So this is not a name brand advocacy uh, issue in any kind, but as a Kaiser patient, for example, if you were home ill and called up the uh, consulting nurse and said, uh, this and so has happened, what can the consulting nurse do? Pull up your chart, pull up your record, say, I see you had a cat bite uh, five days ago. How's that antibiotic working? Fantastic capacity, just beginning to be realized. So a nurse informaticist would be a a combination of computer engineer and nurse who might devise any one of a variety of um, opportunities of data analysis that we may not even have begun to think of. How many of you have a Fitbit? So uh, your Fitbit, does that information go to a central place? Right. And you get your little Fitbit report back, right, that tells you whether you've been an active walker or runner that week or not. Suppose that you were diabetic and the data from your insulin pump went on to uh, be recorded and feed you back a graph of your glucose over time. And if you had taken, I don't know, pictures or one day, you'll just have a sensor, you'll sit down to your meal your electronic device will sense the carbs in your meal. It'll put it into the database and come back and 
whack you over the head in the middle of the night and say you shouldn't have eaten that piece of cake. I don't know what it will do. But the possibilities for you to manage your food, your intake, your physical activity, and manage that data through something that comes to you through a, a device that you are able to carry yourself, that's the field of informatics in which nurses are going to have an enormous role. So is anybody in here already a computer engineer? Add that to your possible list of adding to your nursing career, because that is going to be a growth industry. What does it mean to be a case manager? Has anybody had a case manager? It sounds kind of bad, as if somebody's going to, I'm going to manage your case. I'm going to manage your case. Suppose you have had an injury, and you are home uh, recuperating from that. You need to have all kinds of services coordinated, like our friend up there talked about. A case manager who might work for any one of a number of organizations, including insurance companies, could be someone who is in charge of coordinating all the care around your case. Psychiatric case management, for example, is an incredibly important growing field, as we no longer have institutional care for chronically mentally ill patients who, who nonetheless need supervision that respects their rights and dignity. So instead of having uh, my uh, chronically, uh, psychiatrically ill brother-in-law living on the streets of Sacramento with a case manager with who can be in regular contact with him, he avoids unnecessary contact with the police, he avoids being in situations of danger and homelessness. Um, she's his, his guardian, in a sense, a really important role for nurses in the community. Care administrator uh, hooks in with that as well, with complex patients, particularly around issues such as dying and deciding once families have decided how they want they, how they may hope the exit of their loved one will go, that a care administrator will be there to make that happen, including bringing in hospice services when they're needed, providing home care. If you're a numeric person and want to go to work in the great, vast in health insurance business in the United States, there are so many jobs for nurses as claims analysts, data analysts. These are fantastic jobs that require the clinical skill of a nurse, uh, but move you into that kind of, an, of a business setting. And then, of course, there's research. So what kinds of research do nurses do? Does anybody know? Evidence-based practice, that's good. They look at the data around what things have worked over time and uh, do studies that, for instance, teach us things that we now know that we didn't used to know, like if you tell people before surgery that they're likely to vomit, they're more likely to vomit. That was a very interesting piece of nursing research that led to some differences in the way we approach patients preoperatively by not stressing the likelihood that they will throw up, indicating that it might happen, but it's not inevitable. And that in and of itself, in very well-designed studies, helped the level of postoperative vomiting go down. It seems like common sense, but we needed a strong and capable researcher to figure that out. Or so there's all kinds of um, quantitative research, important with numbers, and then there are very important pieces of qualitative research that nurses have carried out. One of the most important of them being how to be with families with seriously ill children. So who's watched recently the um, Roosevelt um, epic on public TV. Have you watched recently that thing that was on public TV about the Roosevelt? In the day of polio, when Franklin uh, Roosevelt and subsequent others had polio in this country, the families were separated from their children. 
So my brother-in-law, who got polio in 1952, when he entered hospital, his parents were able to visit him one afternoon a week. Imagine the trauma on a young person of being separated from his family in such a cruel way. It brought about trauma and difficulty for him that I think has lasted the rest of his life. Now, thanks to great research that has been done, first we understand the, the infectious um, risk was not as great, but most of all we understand the emotional trauma that comes from separating children from families in this way. Another beautiful piece of nursing research that was done was about families with their um, dying children and the necessity to let families stay with their children through and after death. That was a very upsetting thing to hospital policy because people like to get it, get that, if that thing happened, if death occurred, get the body out of there and do not have the family be with it. What a cruel, needless thing to do. And thanks to great sociologists and nurse researchers, we now know the importance of keeping families together in those terrible situations. I've already ranted endlessly about public health nursing. We can talk more about it later if you want. Corrections nurse. For better or for worse, we spend an enormous piece of our state budget in California on corrections. And some of you may know that the corrections health system in California went into receivership. That is, it's been taken over by another entity because the care that was being offered there was judged to be constitutionally uh, harmful. Many fantastic nurses now are at work in the corrections health system in California and other places working to um, balance the needs of a corrections system with the right to health care that um, their inmates have. Our friend up here mentioned health educator. Of course, this role for nurses is going to get bigger and more important as we go along because, for one thing, we're all getting older and some of us are getting really old. Why am I pointing to myself? I'm not getting older any faster than you, but I am older than you. I'm part of the tsunami of older Americans that is going to have chronic illness, yet need to live at home and want to continue to be active. And the people who are going to help me do that are health educators, the, who along with the public health nurse may end up coming to my home and telling me how to manage my life at home so that I don't fall down, don't break my hip, keep my uh, wits about me, uh, make my library card active, all of the things that are going to make my life uh, worth living. And then there are health coaches. And you can go at this in kind of a couple of different uh, directions. You could be a high-end health coach and work for, who's a celebrity? People, people, who's a celebrity? Give me the name of a celebrity. OK, work be George Clooney's health coach. That could be a highly desirable job. Work in George Clooney's home, helping him and his adorable new uh, human rights uh, lawyer wife uh, design their in-home gym, for example. I'm being a little scornful about that because I guess I don't think that's the greatest thing that a nurse could do. But if you are a celebrity hound and want to work for George Clooney or his ilk, those health coaching jobs for registered nurses are a possibility for you. I guess I prefer to think about health coaches on the other side of the economic spectrum. Health coaches who might work in a community, uh, working with a school population or a, or a, a religious population, uh, helping them find um, better activities for the youth in the area, encouraging the building of a, of a park. Uh, seeing whether the use of that park and the tax dollars that went for it turned out to be beneficial in, them, in, in reduced rates of diabetes among those young children. This kind of activity for nurses of taking 
of working in communities and taking the data from communities and then demonstrating if it has or does not have a good effect is one of the biggest growth opportunities for nurses. And this goes specifically then into the policy analyst world. Is it worth it to the taxpayers to have high nutrition school lunches? Yes, but it had to be demonstrated. Is it worth it to school districts to eliminate soda machines and thereby lose the, the tax benefit that they get from the soda machines versus a long-range uh, benefit from lower dental uh, problems and, uh, and less obesity? That's an extremely complex question that many nurses have spent a lot of time analyzing, looking to see whether they can convince local school boards that it's worth it to lose the money that Pepsi would like to pay you to have that machine in your school district because of a long-term health advantage to your community that you are not, uh, whose dollars you are not going to realize. It's a very complicated policy question that nurses have been at the forefront of. And then, there are all kinds of other businesses where nurses are playing very important roles and will continue to. So what do you think a nurse architect could do? Design hospitals, that's good, and there's been great you know, uh, work about that, like having access to sunlight, having rooftop gardens that, that, that patients can go out to. But think about other roles for nurses uh, in architecture firms. Say what? Yes, that's right. Setting up, uh, setting up homes, for instance, with uh, great access for older people. If you have been in uh, a retirement community, you would see that there's a fairly standard way that those, those uh, halls are, are designed such that there are grab bars at a certain level, right? All of those kinds of things. The next generation of nurse architects is going to turn retirement communities out of those, what I think are terrible, pastel, dull, ghastly places where my mother-in-law lives with those grab bars on the side into brighter, more active places that, that have, for instance, some modest physical challenges for people who are older. For instance, it's good, we now know, for older people to walk on cobblestones. So your good old Italian grandma who struggles out of her house, if any of you have that person, who struggles out of her house and walks on those cobblestones to get to her little market and then carry stuff back, the activity of being on the cobblestones is prolonging her life and increasing her health. So the nurse architect, for example, could build a little part of a garden where the, it's a little bit difficult to walk, it'll be very tricky because she, they don't want to fall down and break their hip, but to make it complex enough and challenging enough to be a um, life-preserving and life-enhancing uh, activity for older people. She'll have to talk to, he or she will have to talk to her friend, the nurse engineer, who would figure out the pitch, I guess, of that difficult thing that she's walking on to see whether how much it could be reduced so that it's hard enough to test you but not so hard that it makes you fall. Are you going to become a nurse architect now? Here, I see your mind. Oh, well, okay. It would, be, it would be great. In the School of Nursing last year, a group of our students worked together with some engineering students here from UC Davis on a wonderful project. One of our nursing students works at the VA where um, veterans come in, many of whom, or a sizable number of whom, have post-traumatic stress disorder. And many of them use service dogs as calming companions to help them deal with their PTSD. But you can't bring your dog into the emergency room. They designed a dog cage for the emergency room that is fully collapsible, so it can be put away. But when a vet comes in with his or her dog, the 
the dog cage can quickly be put up. It is hygienic, which it must be. It's collapsible, and, and, but then strong enough to keep the dog safe. And it's flexible enough so that a vet can wait in the waiting room and have his or her service dog with him if that is an essential companion. It was a beautiful little project, but it took nurses and it took engineers, the people who knew how to deal with the materials and the people who knew what the issues were with PTSD to make this project work together. And then, of course, we have to have nurse software designers, because how else are we going to invent those games that are going to help people learn how to uh, make safer dating choices, for example? Yes? Uh, the nurse architects that I know are nurses who work in architecture firms and have gone back and had some additional education in architecture, but they're not both of those things. But there are many people in the nurse engineering field inventing, for instance, new pieces of hospital equipment or working with materials who are both materials engineers and nurses. Good question. So that's a good end to it. Let's talk about uh, what questions can I answer for you or tell you more about the bright and somewhat unpredictable future of nursing. Yes. So that's a great question. The question is, uh, what is it like to work in a prison situation? And that it may present some special complications for a female nurse working in a predominantly male population. I wish I had my student, Veronica, here, who is the uh, chief nurse of one of our large state prisons, to answer that question more accurately for you. And if you want to talk with her specifically about this, meet me afterwards and I'll, I'll connect the two of you. Um, the prison, prison nursing is a really uh, complicated issue uh, ethically and, oh, I'll just start ethically, providing legally regulated and excellent health care to a population judged to have wronged society uh, can be a very complicated uh, place for nurses. And I would think that the, the, prison, the corrections nurses that I know have managed that uh, tension fantastically. But they do have to be pretty clear on the side of this is a population who deserve excellent care. The security issues are extremely well worked out. That does not end up being a problem for nurses. The, the more complicated issues for nurses, I would say, are managing an increasingly older prison population who have very complex chronic diseases that are not well uh, that don't adjust well to a fairly confined life. So I think it's quite difficult to be an excellent manager of diabetic patients, for example, in a prison population where some of the few uh, pleasures that people have are using the vending machines, for example. Those are the kinds of problems. I, don't think, I think there are more management problems and ethics problems than security problems. Good question. Thank you for that. Yes. Oh, what are the roles for nurses in psychiatric care? What a great question. First of all, there is such desperate need for more nurses interested in psychiatric care who are willing to, who are willing to take on, I would say, a higher therapeutic responsibility with patients. So 
nurses who are acting as therapists, nurses who are acting as coaches and case managers. Um, the pressure right now to become a nurse practitioner with a certification in mental health is extremely high. Those jobs are so desirable right now. I think that that, and then I would say one other piece of this, you know, how are we, how do we best organize community-based psychiatric care? One important question is, are we making the best use of group support for our communities of psychiatric patients? Uh, that would be a very important role for nurses. Another really important role for nurses right now are in our emergency rooms. Remember, we have a broken healthcare system. And a piece of our broken healthcare system is that many of our psychiatrically ill patients end up in the emergency room, a completely inappropriate place for them. But right now, nurses are quite pressed to figure out the best management techniques for patients in emergency rooms. I think increasingly we'll see that emergency rooms will set up psychiatric crisis units that hold people for short periods of time in, you know, off to the side in the ER setting, and that's going to be a really important nursing role there, too. If you want to go into that field, the, the sky is the limit. Yes? Nursing in veterans hospitals. Will I talk about nursing in veterans hospitals? Yes. The Veterans Administration is a system that has relied on nurse practitioners and physician assistants in a, to my mind, because I'm biased about this, wonderful way. So a vast majority of the primary care that's being offered in the VA right now uh, comes, to, uh, comes to the patients through physician assistants and nurse practitioners. Now, of course, you've read that the VA has been in enormous trouble recently with questions about falsifying data, long wait lists, and the cry that has come back from the VA is we need to hire more nurses and nurse practitioners and physician assistants especially, they need physicians as well, and they're waiting to see whether the money will be forthcoming for them to be able to do that. But the role for nurses in the VA system is enormous, and if this issue about of blame and fault finding, uh, if we can pass over that in the VA, that's going to be an enormous expansion for opportunities for nurses there. Yes? If you want to come up uh, to me afterwards, I'll, I'll rant a little tiny bit now, but if you want to come up afterwards, let me give you my card and I'll get you in touch with someone you might be interested in, in knowing. So nurse sociology, <laughs> nurse sociologist, what happens to us when we get sick? What happens to our families when we get sick? How do we take care, for instance, of our demented older people in our household. I just heard a fantastic nurse sociologist the other day talk about a beautiful study that he had undertaken looking at the bargaining that families do around dealing with a demented elder. And he characterized part of this as tricking the elder into uh, I guess I would say colluding with the delusions of a demented elder. And that going along with that used to be thought to be really ethically so unsound as, as something that you shouldn't do. So if your patient comes up to you and says, oh, I'm really enjoying being here at the circus today, you'd say, you're not in the circus. We're here at, you know, Joe's rest home. Do you remember? And it's October. Now, increasingly, the belief is you come up to me and say, I'm really enjoying being in the circus. And I say, isn't it great? And here are the elephants. Ethically, however, I'm colluding with you about a delusion. I'm letting you, I'm going along to believe. So that's the nurse ethicist, maybe. But you can see how the sociology plays out in this. There are a number of nurse uh, researchers over time who have actually gone on to get their PhDs in sociology rather than some other fields because they feel that to be the place they're really going to study about what it means to be ill, what it means to provide care. 
huge field. You had your hand up. Yes. Wow, this question was, what are some of the challenges that the nursing profession is facing now? <sighs> um, well, I mean, I think that the challenges that the nursing profession are facing are the same challenges that our healthcare system as a whole are, uh, is facing. So, do we, do we want there to be a reliable level of care for everyone? Do we feel that some people, that ability to pay should be the final decision point about whether you get excellent care or not? Uh, and have we designed a healthcare system that provides what people need I think those are the bigger challenges for nursing now. Nursing as a profession is incredibly strong right now. The demand for nurses is high. The pay for nurses is excellent. And you can thank the uh, very vigorous and aggressive union activity over the last 20 years for making that so, especially in California. Uh, I think people are understanding m more than ever that the hierarchies that used to exist between physicians and nurses and others are slowly being erased. Uh, call me a Pollyanna, but I think that nursing is in a fantastic place right now. I think the challenge for us is can we take a broken healthcare system and turn it around so that it actually meets the needs of all of the people who live in the United States. To me, that's the challenge. I'm going to hold on you just because you got one question to make sure there's not another person who is dying to ask a question. OK, great. Go ahead. And then this, yours is the last one. So she has a complex question about whether nurses are in places of influence. Am I right about that? Places of influence to actually fix a broken healthcare system. Call me Pollyanna, but uh, I, at, at a national level, right now, if you read in the New York Times in the last couple of weeks, you would have seen a whole series of mentions of a variety of nursing interventions, one of them the nurse family partnership, a national program that's demonstrated that if you put nurses together with high risk, low income families who are having a new baby and provide that family with, with a helpful nurse over a two year period, the results from that experiment are fantastic. And over 15 years of research, it's been shown that families who participate in the nurse family partnership have m better uh, success at finding jobs, less activity uh, with corrections, uh, are able to, uh, their children are less likely to, to stay on free or reduced price lunch. They have higher school success. It's a fantastic program. So Nicholas Kristof, world famous uh, uh, New York Times contributor, writes again and again about the nurse family partnership. I think that's one example of a place where an activity that's fairly homely in a way, right, to put a nurse in an at-risk family and see what happens, 
It's not high tech. There's no MRI involved in that. It's the skill of a great nurse coming into a difficult situation, creating a relationship with a family that turns out to have fantastic success over time. So I think there are multiple opportunities like that. And the Nurse Family Partnership, as one example, has gone so far as to be uh, lauded in the White House, uh, has been talked about at the highest levels of government. So I think those activities that are showing how, how really smart men and women who become nurses are expressing, because you have to write it up and express it and talk about it, are expressing the things that they do so that influential policy uh, champions bring them into the tent. And you could be the person to do that. So thank you all. It was great talking with you. I really appreciate it. <laughs>